What is going on lovely people? This is video number five in my biochemistry for MCAT playlist. Now let's talk about the titration of the amino acid before you freak out. Oh my goodness, shut up, it's easy. What does titration mean? Gradual change, gradual change, that's it. Look at this beautiful graph. You have pH here, pH of the medium. Is it more acidic or more basic? And here is OH, not H, OH. As you know, OH is basic. So as you go from here to here, we are adding more bases to the solution. And therefore, what's going to happen to the pH as you add more bases, it's going to go up. And that's why we're going upwards in this direction. As you increase the bases, pH is going to rise. In the last video, we talked about the titration of the amino acids and the slope and the tan theta, the pH, the OH, pKa1, pKa2, the pI. It was such an epic video. Today, we'll talk about peptides dipeptides, oligopeptides, polypeptides, the peptide bonds. Here is the cheeseburger. It has carbohydrate, it has protein, it has fat. Those are the macromolecules. These are the polymers. And then you digest them. So carbohydrates become polysaccharides, and then disaccharides, monosaccharides, and then the monosaccharides are glucose, fructose, and galactose. These are monomers. Proteins become polypeptides, then oligopeptides, then dipeptides, and then amino acids. How about a monopeptide? Well, there is no such thing. Shut up. A monopeptide is one amino acid. Fats or lipids, triglycerides, these are the big ones. And then cholesterol and fatty acid, these are the small ones. Here are amino acids, they become peptides, and then they become proteins. These are the macromolecules, these are the micromolecules. Polymers, monomers. So while walking down the street, how can I pick an amino acid? How can I recognize the doofus? All right, the doofus will have an amino group on one side and a carboxyl group on the other side. And you have a carbon in between. This is called the alpha carbon. This carbon is attached to R, which is the side chain. And just to balance it, you have to add an H here because carbon requires four bonds. Amino group here, carboxyl group here. This is the side chain or the R group. And this is the one that determines the properties of the amino acids. Chemical properties, that is. Does the order matter? Like, should I write the amino here or here? Like, does it matter amino first or carboxyl first? Yes, of course it matters. A comes before C in English, right? Yep, amino groups comes before the carboxyl group. Here's the beauty of the amino acids. They have their amino group and their carboxyl group attached to the same freaking carbon known as the alpha carbon. Is there an exception? Of course, every rule has exceptions. This is GABA. GABA stands for what? Gamma amino butyric acid. Say it one more time because it was so beautiful. Gamma amino butyric Gamma, you know why we call it gamma? Yup, indeed, because it's a gamma carbon, which is three carbons away from the carboxyl one. So after the carboxyl, you have alpha, and then you have beta, and then you have gamma carbon. In English, we read from left to right. Same thing with amino acids. We read from the amino group towards the carboxyl group. Why do we care? Because this is the order of the amino acid coming out of the freaking ribosome on the rough endoplasmic reticulum, if you remember. The ribosome makes the N-terminus first before the C-terminus. That's why we care. Let me ask you a question. How many amino acids do we have in our bodies? Oh, I know, medicosis. My biology professor told me that we have 20 amino acids only. Shut up. Your biology professor is myopic, no pun intended. The 20 amino acids that you're talking about are only the proteogenic amino acids. You have other non-proteogenic amino acids in your freaking body. But what's the difference? Proteogenic amino acid, just by the name, look at the name, proteogenic. So they will make proteins. Oh, yeah, they are incorporated into proteins. Amino acid and amino acid, another amino acid, make them into peptides and then proteins. They are also coded by a genetic codon. Remember these three lovely nitrogenous bases? What are these 20 amino acids that your biology professor told you about? Yeah, the famous alanine, aspartic acid, aspargine, arginine, glutamic acid, glutamine. So you have aspartic acid, aspargine, glutamic acid, glutamine, phenylalanine, glycine, tyrosine, lysine, valine, leucine, isoleucine. You need to remember these three together. Valine, leucine, isoleucine, histidine, cysteine, serine, proline, tryptophan, threonine, methine, my favorite because it gives your Uncle Sam a methyl donor. 
How about the non-proteogenic? Oh, right, they are not coded by a codon. They are not incorporated into proteins, but they exist, such as ornithine, if you remember your urea cycle, pyrolysine. Where the flip did you get pyrolysine from? From lysine. Selenocysteine, where do you get it from? From cysteine. Seleno means selenium. Pyro, because it contains pyrrolene ring or pyrrolene side chain. Where did homocysteine come from? From cysteine. Do you remember the coagulation factors? Yeah, each one had a name and a number. Okay, amino acids, each one has a name, a one-letter abbreviation, and a three-letter abbreviation. You need to memorize all of this. As you know, amino acids are the small ones, micromolecules, then peptides, then the big ones, proteins. But not all peptides are created equal. We have dipeptides, tripeptides, oligopeptides, and polypeptides. Di means two, so dipeptides, two amino acids, tripeptides, three amino acids, oligopeptides from four to twenty, poly, more than twenty. Therefore, in all honesty, it goes like this, amino acids, followed by dipeptides, followed by tripeptides, oligopeptides, polypeptides, then proteins. Pause and review. An amino acid plus an amino acid equals dipeptide. How do we join them together? Through a peptide bond. This was COOH. Say goodbye to the OH. Now you have CO and stop. And then this was NH2. Say goodbye to 1H. So you're only left with N and H. All right. Then what's the functional unit here? CO, HN, or NH. So CO, NH is the functional group. What kind of bond is this? Peptide bond, aka amide bond. What's going to happen to the OH and the H? You're going to combine them together to make water. So peptide bond formation looks like this. Amino acid number one plus amino acid number two. And then boom, combine them together. This is your beautiful peptide bond. And this is the water. What do you call this? Dipeptide. What kind of reaction is this? Well, any reaction that removes water is a dehydration reaction. Any reaction that removes water is a condensation reaction. You can also consider it an acyl substitution reaction. CONH is the functional group. Between C and N, there is a pi electrons. Therefore, there is resonance. What the flip is resonance? Resonance means magnification. They become more robust. Why? Because this is a partial double bond. Like this. That's double. Oh, but the N has to be N+. plus. This bond is the peptide bond or amide bond. Can you describe it? Sure, it's a partial double bond. Therefore, rotation is restricted. Why? Because it's a double bond. You cannot rotate around a double bond. And if you cannot rotate, you are rigid. Contrast that with these single bonds. These are sigma bonds. Sigma is single. Signal is sigma and sigma is single. They are less restricted. Hashtag more rotation. Got some swirling action going. Dr. Stephen Covey said, begin with the end in mind. Ask yourself, what am I trying to achieve? Oh, I want the peptide to perform its function. Sure, then the peptide needs to be stable, All right? But if you have a different goal in mind, I want the peptide to be digested. Now the peptide, it needs to be broken down. How do I break a peptide? By hydrolysis, by adding water. So hydrolysis is adding water in order to break down something. Who does that? A hydrolytic enzyme. Well, no, duh. You see that? That's a peptide. When you add water to the peptide, oh, you break it down to amino acid. Hashtag hydrolysis. Hashtag hydrolytic enzymes. Can you give me examples of these hydrolytic enzymes? Sure. Trypsin and chymotrypsin. They are hydrolytic enzymes that cleave the carboxyl group. They cleave the C-terminus. And this involves both of them. However, What's different about trypsin is that it breaks the carboxyl of arginine and lysine. How about chymotrypsin? It breaks the carboxyl of other amino acids such as phenylalanine, tyrosine, and tryptophan. These are the similarities. These are the differences. How to break a man? I mean, how to break a peptide? You break it by hydrolysis. What do you mean by hydrolysis? Add water in order to break down. So here is H and OH. This is water. H plus OH is water. Add the H here. Add the OH here. This will become COOH and this will become NH2. You added hydrogen to the nitrogen and you added hydroxyl to the carboxyl. I love it. It has a good ring to it. Add hydrogen to the nitrogen. Add hydroxyl to the carboxyl. And this is how you break a peptide. Some pearls for the pros. What's the difference between amino and amine or amino? Okay, amino is C 
bound to N with a single bond. But look at amino, double bond. Don't forget the pH and the pKa. They are also involved in something else called the henderson hasselbalch equation. What if the numerator equaled the denominator? Now, when this equals this, the ratio is going to be 1. What's the log 1? 0, baby. And now the pH equals the pK. Of course, as you add more bicarbonate, pH goes up, and as you add more carbon dioxide, pH goes down. If you want to learn more about the pH, check out my acid base imbalance course on my website medicosisperfectsnellis.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thank you for watching. As always, be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense.